Hey Deb, it's Zoe again. Um, I'm, I'm really high tech this time around, so I hope this works. Um, so we're talking about crime and punishment and we're way in over our heads. Uh, at least I am. Uh, but but that, that's fine, we'll keep doing it and see where it gets us. So you, you, you raised a lot, of, a lot of issues in your previous posts and I, uh, I think that the question that's raised now is how do we read this book? I think that's the question with any great book, any great work of literature. How can, how should we approach it? I think the great thing about this process is that as you try to unlock the book, as you try to understand it, go deeper in, in it, you, you start answering questions about life. And so the question of how do I read the book becomes, how should I live my life? Um, but 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 the tricky part, of course, is that there's no clear you know one way to to, to do that, to read a book or to leave, live your life. So um, so there's many different ways you can read this one. One of them is gender politics, um, and I'll talk about that more in just a second. Psychoanalysis. I mean, how much has Freud been influenced by Dostoevsky? Wrote about Dostoevsky. Freud did. Um, then. You know, there's all sorts of the Christian themes. Is this a book about a man who's becoming who becomes a Christian? I mean, that's one way to to to, to read it. But um, uh, you mentioned archetypes. That wouldn't be female archetypes or goddess archetypes. I would not read I, that. To me, that's not enough because the thing about these characters, the female and the male characters too, is that they they are um, they contradict themselves. You know, the minute you think that they're going one way, you turn the page and then they turn around, they head to the opposite direction. So it's very hard to, you know, read them through archetypes. They don't just, they're, they're very, very complex, I think. So the pawnbroker, for example, you said, is she, does, does she represent wisdom? I see her more as decay and corruption. I don't see wisdom. I see weakness, but I don't see wisdom. Um, she's old, but is she wise? I, I don't see that anywhere in the book. Um, then Katerina Ivanovna is another example. You mentioned her, and she is definitely pitiful. I mean, she's sick, she's poor, she, she has a meltdown in, 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 in the streets right before she dies. I mean, it's, it's a very, very uh, uh, um, sad character, but at the same time, you know, she's violent. She beats her children. She beats her husband, uh, and they're physically weaker than she is. So she's no martyr. She's not a martyr. It's it's complex. So the mother, Raskolnikov's mother, she she adores her son, but she feeds his ego. He goes to say goodbye to her at the end, and she gives him something about you know you can't do no wrong, my son. I mean, she can't help him, even though she loves him. So it's 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 comp the sister too. She, uh, she, he goes to confess to her, Raskolnikov goes to confess to his sister his crime, and she says, you know, turn yourself in because blood has been spilled. And meanwhile, you know, she just shot somebody, <laughs> shot somebody and almost killed him. Granted, it wasn't premeditated, but, um, you know, and she felt threatened, but still. So it's complex, is what I'm saying. And, uh, but the point is, you know, um, it's interesting because at the end of the book, Dostoevsky has Raskolnikov. Uh, he's already in jail, and now Raskolnikov, his, he now loves Sonia fully, and he's ready to move away from his previous, oops, from his previous life, and he's entering a new world. Uh, and Dostoevsky doesn't call it faith; he doesn't name it, but he says. Um, Instead of dialectics, there was life in this new place. So Raskolnikov has moved, has, is no longer in that place where he's just lost in all these ideas, and the, the, this mire of, you know, ideology, but, but now there's life and there's no dialectics. And it's almost like Dostoevsky saying, don't read my book with dialectics either. You can't live your life with dialectics and you can't read literature that way either. I don't know. Um, but but so how, how to read a book if not with dialectics or archetypes or psychoanalysis or how do you approach it? And I think 
one way that I would say is just read it very carefully especially a book like this you need to because it's so detailed it's, it's excruciating how detailed it is I mean it's just an exhausting book there's all these endless scenes you know you, you come out of reading them exhausted I mean I, I can't imagine what it must have been like for him to actually write this stuff um, but there were some things that some details some moments throughout the book that that, that grabbed me when I first read it and so I want to read a couple of them just to address some of your points. One of them is a moment when Raskolnikov meets, he sees a group of women in the street. So these women are prostitutes, but Dostoevsky calls them women. And, and so Raskolnikov stopped near this large group of women. They were talking in husky voices. All of them were wearing cotton dresses, goatskin shoes, and nothing on their heads. So no hats. Some were over 40, but there were some younger than 17. Almost every one of them had a black eye. So I remember reading this and thinking, okay, wow, what, 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 what is this? What is he trying to say? And it is something very disturbing. It's a very disturbing image. And you're right in pointing that out, that the book is full of disturbing stuff about women. It's full of violence against women, women being murdered, raped, beaten, uh, uh, you know, um, dying and you know in the street, uh, sick women dying and, and 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 committing suicide. It's again and again you cannot ignore this. But but uh, Dostoevsky's intention isn't, I think, to sensationalize it. Like in this moment, he's zooming in on the women. He's saying all, but all of them had a black eye. Almost all of them. And it's, he's not interested in the physical. He's interested in the experience. You know? Uh, he's saying, um, you know, he's interested in the shared experience of these women. Um, he's not just, you know, he's not trying to shock. You know? And um, he does this throughout the book. And he, he goes, he zooms in in order, in a way, to zoom out, to talk about something universal. He's humanizing these women here. He's not being, uh, you know, he's not trying to shock you. He's, he's trying to humanize them. And only in, in one sentence, you know, in a few sentences, he does it, I think. And, and there's another point, another moment in the book where he talks about Raskolnikov saying, he was young, abstract, and consequently cruel. I remember reading this the first time too and being struck by it because it's, he's abstract and consequently cruel? What does that mean? I mean, why would he be cruel because he's, why is he cruel because he's abstract? But he, but he is, you know, he's not able, Raskolnikov is, is, has a lot of ideas, but he can't see what's in front of him. He can't focus. He's talking about Sonia here and he has thoughts about Sonia, which she get, might end up in a madhouse, might kill herself, but he's objectifying her in a way. He's not really yet, he doesn't love her, he doesn't care about her yet. So he's, it's very abstract. It's all about, you know, his ideas about what might happen to a woman like her. He can't see the black eye in a way yet here. He's abstract. He's not specific. This whole book may very well be read as a book about someone who learns to fo learns how to focus on the people around him, the people in his life, learns to be specific, learns to move away from, you know, um, the, uh, gets rid of abstraction, of looking at the world in an abstract way. I don't know. Um, and... And finally, yes, the, the, the part you mentioned, the, which I had completely forgotten about, the, uh, the essay about whether women are human beings or not. So Raskolnikov kills two women, murders two women, and then a few pages later, he goes to somebody's, uh, he goes to another character who gives him a book to translate, and the title of the book is, Are Women Human Beings? And he can't do it. He, he just can't do it. He walks out and comes back, gives the book back, says, I can't do this. Can't translate. I don't like translations or something like that. 
So what does that mean? You're telling me you killed two people and you, and, and you can't write a stupid little essay and take the money and go home. You know, you need the money, but he can't do it because he killed the women, the pawnbroker at least, because he thought she was an insect, vermin. And he has all these ideas about, you know, history and Napoleon and all of these great men who are able to kill, you know, thousands of people and never be held accountable for it. And all this stuff mixed up in his head. And he calls her an insect. He calls her insignificant. And then a few pages later, somebody asks him a specific question. Are women human beings? And he can't answer it. So when you make it specific, it's harder. It's much harder. So people say, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pro-human rights. And then you say, okay, should gay people get married? Well, of course they should be allowed to get married. They're human beings, you know. This, this happened every time with civil rights. Should black people, people be allowed on the bus? Well, of course they should be allowed on the bus. They're human beings. What an absurd question. Women, should they be allowed to vote? And yet again, again, we ask, ask these absurd questions of each other, generation after generation after generation. Raskolnikov has internalized this, and he's angry about this. He understands the injustice, but but he he doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know what to do about it. So he acts on his impulse to be cruel, and gradually he discovers why that was the wrong way to try and answer the question. Um, and anyway, I, um, there's a lot to say. This is a very 11 minutes, it's almost 12 minutes, very long video. So um, I'll just stop now. But I wanted to get your idea about a lot of things. I guess um, let me ask you about, I guess, the cultural aspect of it because you're an American, I'm a Greek, and you're directing my play, the stenographer, about. Um, Yeah, about this book. It's ironic because my play features a character who tries to talk about the book and realizes you can't really talk about this book. Um, and yet it's compulsive. We can't stop. So so you're an American directing the play, and I'm a Greek, and I've written a play, and it, 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 it's partly about a Russian book written by Russian in Germany. So I just wanted to get your maybe your thoughts about, um, about that. Um, about the cultural aspect, um, and I guess on my, on my part, um, I'm, I feel very very close to this book. I feel like, in a way, it was written about my life, you know, and the the questions and and uh, the questions that torment me personally. So I just wanted to to get your feelings, I guess, your emotional re reaction to the book, um, too. So, yeah, we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.